Hello and welcome to this video on stage directions from the play Romeo and Juliet. The reason why we're looking at this, and I know that this is something we've discussed before, but if you are hoping to get those top grades, if you're aiming for a level 7, 8 or 9, then you have to analyse language, structure and form. And a great way to show the examiner that you have an appreciation of the form of this, which of course is a play, is to comment on the stage directions. So we're going to be focusing on three that I hope you're going to be able to keep in your mind so that when you're sat in the exam, you will be able to say something about stage directions, directly showing the examiner that you have an appreciation for form and that you can analyse form. So let's get started um, and we'll start from the beginning, act one, scene one. So this scene comes directly after the prologue um, and the action starts with the stage direction, um, enter Samson and Gregory of the House of Capulet armed with swords and bucklers. Now what's important here and the words that I think you should zoom in on as uh, swords and bucklers because straight away we're presented with the theme of violence all the way throughout the play uh, we know um, that jewels are mentioned rapiers are mentioned um, but this is what initiates that theme of conflict and so that's something very important to notice straight away that we're introduced to What's also significant about this quotation um, is the fact that the play opens with Samson and Gregory, who are relatively very small characters actually in Romeo and Juliet. And the reason why Shakespeare has done this um, is because he shows that everybody is influenced by this ancient grudge. Um, in the prologue, we have the, the quotation, um, civil blood makes civil hands unclean. And it suggests that absolutely everybody is being um, affected by this grudge. Um, the idea is that conflict has been spread. It sets a threatening tone, which perhaps could foreshadow the ending. So moving on to act three, scene one. Um, which could be argued is the climax of the play. We have these stage directions. Tybalt, under Romeo's arm, stabs Mercutio and flies with his followers. Um, and I think what's interesting is the physicality of this murder. Tybalt has reached under Romeo's arm to kill Mercutio. So Romeo is in, in between Tybalt and Mercutio. And it suggests perhaps almost that Romeo should have been protecting Mercutio. So we have some links there to themes of friendship. Um, also, it shows Tybalt's almost lust for killing, his unpredictable manner. You know, this is a, a killing where there isn't any honour. He's not looked Mercutio in the face as he has killed him. It seems quite immature. Um, and then we have this last little phrase, which I think is that if you can remember this for the exam, that's fantastic. Flies with his followers. It suggests cowardice which contrasts quite massively with his name. As we know, his name um, means uh, from bold people, from brave people. And it's not a brave thing to do, to fly. Um, and we're not sure whether he um, is thinking about uh, the prince's words at the beginning of the, of the play, um, that his life will pay the forfeit for interrupting the peace, um, or whether he's maybe now scared of Romeo, um, as he knows that Romeo is going to want to seek revenge. Either way, he flies with his followers. So let's move on now to Act 5, Scene 3, when Paris goes to visit Juliet, who he assumes dead, um, in her vault. Um, and this is the quotation that I'd like us to look at. Enter Paris and his page, bearing flowers and a torch. And the bit that I'd like you to remember is the fact that Paris is bearing flowers. Now, flowers often symbolise love. And so we're left with this question, did Paris actually truly love Juliet? We have this amazing love story between Romeo and Juliet all the way throughout the play. But there are little clues that maybe actually suggest that Paris loved Juliet too. Um, it could be said that he might have bought the flowers just to enhance his reputation, almost for show. Um, but in actual fact, there's no one around to impress. He's there with his page, who is of lower class and most likely younger. So he didn't need to bring flowers for his benefit. So it leaves us with this idea that Paris has bought flowers to show his love for Juliet. I also want to zoom in on the word torch um, because it makes us think about way back in Act 1, Scene 5 when Romeo and Juliet meet, meet for the first time. And Romeo says, she doth teach the torches to burn bright. And it's almost like Paris's love may actually have matched Romeo's love. And so we have that word there that is a bit of a throwback to Act 1, Scene 5. 
So if nothing else, I'd like you to remember the word flowers and the word torch. And if you're asked about Paris, then this would be a really good stage direction to use to help you analyse his character. So just to finish, um, if you did want to use any of this information and practice writing essays with it, here's an exam question that you could um, give it a go with. You could have a go at writing the whole thing, or if you wanted just one paragraph that talks about stage directions and what that shows about Tybalt, um, and I'd happily mark whatever it is that you produce.